So then we would actually uh, do instrumentation of the robot and then do the flexibility with the instrumentation, which I thought would be fun. And then the third would be actually having a real robot and designing the controls, the using the feedback control to control the real robot, and possibly with some path planning on it as well. So those are topics that, if we do get funding, probably start being offering, uh, offered in the spring of next year. And there's sort of, you can retake it, so if you'd like a topic for that, you're great if you don't skip it. Um, Ideally, Adam Leeper will be working with Koshik and I on the course, too. So uh, that was the part as well. So the, mo the money has to come in. Adam looks like he's probably going to take a job that's 30 hours a week, which is great. So he has freedom to teach. And then uh, and Koshik will be working with us. So follow as well. It's going to be pretty interesting. Um, it requires everybody, everybody who's in the class has to have taken A, ME331 A. However, they don't have to have had taken B. So it won't be based necessarily on Keynes mechanics or um, or Lagrangian mechanics. It will be based on you have to know the roadmaps. Uh, so that's that's what the underlying is. But a lot so a lot of people will be taking it concurrently. So they'll be taking ME three thirty one B as well as ME three thirty one L. Now just as a curiosity, I'm trying to figure out even how many units to even offer for it if it just comes to pass. So I was thinking we could do it variable units, so that way if you have room in your schedule, you just sort of dial in wherever you want. Um, I think the maximum I'd be comfortable with is three, and zero is probably not a good idea just because the university doesn't, doesn't think it's really that valuable. So everybody can audit it. I mean, that's fine. So I was thinking like one, two, or three units. I don't know. Does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, so that's, that, was, that was another sort of just administrative detail. Um, probably offer just once a week. Uh, that would be the once a week. and. It would be like a lab course, and we call it, I mean, 331L for like a lab. So it would be some simulation, some, probably some hardware as well. Um, so you get some touching material. All right, anyway, that was uh, just something that's in the, in the plan. 
All right, so this is the part of the course that we, um, we're going to leave for V anyways, but when we were in A, it actually follows in A really well. So it, it's, this is not a constraint idea. This is actually trying to tie these back in for 3D a little bit better than we have. Um, and in 3D, what we talked about were angles and what is an angle. And, uh, and just remember several of you up here and me grilling you. I was sitting there and you were standing here. And I brought up an aircraft and I said, so how can you orient an aircraft? And we talked about all kinds of different ways to orient. And so I want to go through all the different ways you can do orientation of a rigid body, for example, an aircraft, a football, a tennis racket, whatever it might be, in a room, which is the room uh, end, so or, or earth end, whatever. So I want to talk about how do, how do you do this. And what we've been doing up to now is, um, and what a lot of people do, we'll talk about roll pitch yaw, yeah, OK? Or, um, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So a theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, they're called um, Euler angles, rotation angles. Sometimes they have other fancy names like Bryant angles. Those are just a special case. But if you've ever heard the word Bryant angles, you're like, OK, that's just the same old, same old. And then there are subject-specific ones. So we'll just talk about those. There's um, roll pitch yaw, right? So there's roll pitch yaw. If you're a biomechanics person, You'll be talking about um, like rotation, obliquity, and torsion. I mean, there's all kinds. Of, each field has its sort of name for each of these. So they have a name for a sequence and an order. Roll pitch yaw is one of them. So what I use to say that is just one way to do it. Now, the advantage of it is um, that they can keep track of wrap. Um, they can track wrap, and I'll tell you what that means in a second. So it's a nice idea. They're relatively easy to deal with. They're easy to understand. So that's that's a nice advantage, and that's what we actually used before. So we've been we've been doing this, and we've been doing the rotation angles. The disadvantage, yeah, kill sheet. It's rotation. Yeah. So it's, that's called Euler angles, rotation angles. They're called Brian angles. So after roll pitch yaw, what do you? Uh, roll pitch yaw. And then rotation, obliquity, torsion is, is another. These are for biomechanics people. So each field will have its sort of version of what they would like to call the Euler angles. And then they all insist it's standard. Okay, so every single time I work with a company, they go, like, "Oh, these are standard in the industry." It's just hogwash. I mean, this, even inside of like, I worked at NASA for years, and they would say, "Okay, we're going to use the following real pitch yaw angles, blah blah blah." And then they have this convention, you know, Z is downward, positive, and blah. And then you go to the next group, and they're like, no, we don't use those. We use the standard, NASA standard, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, they use the NASA standard, blah, blah, blah. And it's not what you're saying it is. So um, I guess what I'm trying to get at is there's no standard up here. It's just you've got to really clear it up. So they're, they're relatively straightforward. And what we do to make it really clear is what we do is we say they're, um, we'll say they're body fixed. And then we'll say, you know, beta 1 bx, beta 2, by, beta 3, bz. So we actually, in our discussions and the way that anybody's been taught directly or indirectly by Kane, just said, look, just call out the angles, call out what uh, what you're doing, the sequence. And this is a sequence. So you first rotate theta 1 around bx, then theta 2, by, and then theta 3, bz. Now make it clear, for those of you who have your book, um, on your book, you have like bx, by, bz on your book. And what this comes down to is you start off with BX, BY, BZ um, a line. I'll, I'll actually show it like this so you can see it. So this uh, B, BX is heading towards you right now. BY is down and BZ is this way. So a one way to do orientation of the book in the room N is to initially align like BX with NX. So NX will be that way, NY was that way, and NY this way. And then say, I'm going to um, do a, a successive set of orientations of this relative to the room by first rotating by an angle theta 1 around bx. So I know bx is this way. And so what you, what you do is with your right hand, you go, OK, everything has to rotate this. So this is theta 1 bx. So this would be, if you're an aircraft, this would be pitch. Right? So if this is an aircraft, you say this is pitch first. Now, if you don't like that that's pitch, if you say, well, I really would have that have to be roll, then you just change what the vectors are on the aircraft, and you repaint the vectors, and now they're painted differently, and now BX points this way, and now that this 
would be it, and this would be yaw. But if you really want it to be roll, so if you say I want roll to be it, then you'd actually paint the, paint the vectors on the aircraft slightly different again, and then make them so that this is yaw, right? So on this aircraft, there are BX, BY, BZ, all right, like this. So you see BX is pointing forward along the aircraft. You can see it again, BX is that way. So the first one here, if we do this one, this would be a roll. So this would be a roll first. That's because BX is pointed this way. So that's roll. All right, and pitch is BY. Now the BY vector is now pointing down, so we want to roll, uh, sorry, pitch. Now pitch, if everything was lovely and back to normal, pitch would just be this. This is the aircraft's pitching. And, and people say pitch up, pitch down. Look, you got to have your vector, you got to use your right hand rule, and that's pitch. So this is pitch. So pitch is this way, and the last is yaw. And yaw, once you know BX, BY, you know the BZ is now this way. Again, this isn't necessarily NASA standard, standard uh, vectors. So you go like this, and that's going to be yaw. But once you paint your vectors onto your, your actual equipment, whether it's the book, a football, a tennis racket, an aircraft, then you call out a sequence of rotations, and they're different. So just to make sure we remember what we mean by different is, if you rotate first 90 degrees, when you do 90 degree rotations, there's a 90 degree BX, followed by a 90 degree BY, followed by a 90 degree BZ. So these are the three, this is, a sequence of three, and we had done this before with the book, which I thought was helpful. If you have your book, you can do it. If you don't, that's fine. But looking at the book, the so BX is out. We'll do a 90 degree BX that does this. So it's 90 degrees, this is BX out. Now BY is now up, so we're going to do 90 degree BY that goes this way, and then 90 degrees BZ, and BZ is pointing towards you, and so that goes like that. So if you can see, what you'll see is this, the book is now on the table facing me, it's, it's great. If you instead do the rotation sequence Z, Y, X, or any, any other order, start again with this, you go rotation B, Z, 90 degrees, so that's B, Z, 90 degrees, followed by B, Y, which is now this way, 90 degrees, and then followed by B, X, which is now pointing down um, this way, so 90 degrees. Now, if I take the same book and put it on the table, you can see it's not in the same orientation. So, even though they're the same angles, even though they're the same vectors, this, this is a sequence that's completely made up in my brain. This is, this is purely math. And a lot of people lose sight of that. The disadvantage is that it's pure math. It doesn't, they don't, there's no physical meaning really to these. This is a sequence, it's in your head, it doesn't have any physical meaning at all, and, and order matters. So, um, unless the angles are small. Okay, so if you instead of doing 90, 90, 90, you do 2, 3, 4, then the order doesn't make as much difference anymore. All of a sudden, the angle, the orientation of the aircraft is going to be about the same. So this is something that actually is not well understood. So when someone says angle and they're talking 3D, immediately you should be concerned, do they really know what they're talking about? And the answer is mostly no, they don't. It's, it's just really hard. Angles get much more complicated when you go into 3D than they do in 2D. And, um, uh, all right, so this is what we've actually already done. What we also did with the rolling disc problem and with the, we have a sphere problem is we had a problem where we said, okay, that's great, we have these now three angles, and it was a nice picture of the rolling disc. We took the rolling disc, we went through a series of three uh, rotations, and then we said, what's the angular velocity, and then convert the angular velocity to omega x, omega y, omega z. So, once you do this, you say, okay, I got, I get this beautiful body fix, I understand this. Then what I'd like to do is say, okay, great, here's the advantage, 
disadvantage is not so bad. Pure math, the order matters, okay, so now you understand that. So very little that you can see is gone, sort of, I would say, bad. Until Hannah comes up and then she says, okay, what's so bad about it? And as if you wouldn't mind coming up. And I'm run the computer. So we're going to do a roll pitch log thing where we're now going to try to simulate a spinning book or an aircraft or whatever. So if we do the spinning book problem where you throw a book up and you spin and you realize if you spin around, you know, the BX direction, that that would be really great and life is good. So if you wouldn't mind bringing up more shoes, you know, that beautiful, you know, yeah, it's almost like bad to hide that beautiful background. Okay. I'm assuming, do I need that? Or are we just doing it in the motion? Either system? way, yeah. Whatever okay. you, however you like to work it. recreate what we did for the spinning book, all right? So here we have a book. Um, we'll say Newtonian frame n. We'll very quickly get through this. Uh, Newtonian, just about the idea of frame space n. That's the room. Good. And then uh, rigid body b. Good. And then you'll say uh, b, uh, we're going to set its inertias. So b period set inertia left paren. B center mass, comma, IXX equals, okay, so for IXX we'll do, um, uh, that's three, comma, uh, IYY equals uh, two, and IZZ equals one. Okay, and if we want, we could put kilogram meter squares, whatever, that's good enough. Fine. Right, type list, just so we can see what we All right, so, bang, here we are. So that's, we're going to do basically M equal DHTT. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to look at the, how the orientation of the book changes. Um, so that's the M equals uh, I alpha, so it's the I part. Now we're going to introduce variables, omega x, omega y, omega z, so you type variable, space, omega x prime, comma, omega y prime, comma, omega z prime. Good. And then we'll do b set angular, capital B period set angular velocity, and then acceleration too, we'll do the acceleration when we're at it, left paren, n, comma, uh, omega x times bx plus omega y times by, This is the, the inertia part. We've now done the right-hand side. That's the alpha part. And for this object, we're just going to say there are no moments on it at all. So we're ready to actually form equations of motion. So we'll say um, uh, equate EOM, equation of motion, EOM vector equals B period get dynamics left paren B center mass. So this is basically saying this is M equal the HDT. So go get it. Enter. Okay, so now these are the equations of motion, three times omega x prime, etc. Now, if you wouldn't mind, just type save and we'll do, uh, I always like hope, hope period text. Okay, and what I want to do, oh, I guess you don't want to overwrite it or we'll do Hannah.txt. How about that? Yeah. You kind of self involved if I read that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta worry if she's already got one out. Like, oh yeah, Hannah, Hannah's, Hannah's awesome. <laughs> um, all right, so the reason that I, I like this, but I, I don't like the fact that it's a three and a two, and I like to see the inertia, so I'm gonna actually just do a small change. So um, one thing you can do actually in MG is type exclamation point and then notepad uh, space Hannah.txt. Right, so you can bring up. Oh, sweet. What's yeah. here? 
Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, if you wouldn't mind, now type the three, do what it says, type three space kilogram times meter squared. So, and I will y equals two. Yeah, same thing. And um, while we're at it, since we're here, why don't we put, um, after the equations of motion, we're going to actually form them one by one. So actually, call, call that, instead of equation of motion, we can call it zero if you want, Z-E-R-O, because that's equal to zero, and that's a zero vector. And then we'll type Z-E-R-O, left bracket, left square bracket, um, left square. Oh, sorry. Yep. And one, right bracket, equals dot zero vector comma bx. Okay. okay, and then do that three times. You might want to just copy it. Okay. 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 Okay.